Good morning. My name is Scott Redler, Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Brittany Umar with The Street, and together we bring you Morning Call Express. So markets ended their three-day losing streak yesterday, and largely it seems to be on hopes of a fiscal cliff compromise. Scott, what do you attribute it to? I think there's a little bit of everything. Uh, hearing that perhaps that they're raising it to 400,000 versus 250, and before that he said a million. You know, there's just some compromise happening in Washington, which is something that we typically don't see. So it's a, it's a pleasant sign. Besides that, you also have overseas markets rallying. You have a lot of indices going to you know yearly highs, and you also have you know the euro on the move and the dollar declining, which is good for you know for equity. So there's a lot going on here besides the technical action, which has been very constructive. So what levels are you watching in the S&P right now? If we go look at the chart of the S&P right here, you'll see that ever since that November 16th reversal, it's been really nice to have a portfolio approach. Here's the reversal. Here's your first move. And then we've been methodically going higher. <coughs> Excuse me. And then more recently, we just held um, after this three-day pullback, the important moving averages and had a nice powerful move here. So at this point, I think 1438, 1440 is resistance. We get above that. Really, the, the highs of the year might not happen you know, this year, but 1474 is the next major resistance. And over in the tech sector, Apple's getting more compelling, putting in a reversal yesterday. Do you think the rally we saw yesterday was sustainable? As of right now, it was a nice cash flow trade. We talked about the pivot in Apple yesterday, 505. There's a lot of, everyone was just surrounding that area, not knowing if we'd break below it and go to 480, or if we'd go below it, come back above and put that red dog reversal strategy. So far, you know, the Bulls had a minor win yesterday in Apple. You go to the chart, you will see after a huge move from, the, the, you know, from 705 all the way down, knocking some teeth out of investors and traders. You, know, you finally had your first reversal right here back to 594. And then yesterday, 505 was the pivot. And what did it do? Went below to as low as 5, what, a, a one-ish, and then reversed and closed strong. So that got me long. I'm still long some. You know, it seems like it's opening around 525 to fill the gap. And let's see if we do another constructive step, which would be holding today's opening gap. If Apple does and it goes from positive to negative, then it's still, you know, pressure's on. But if it could hold and go, that should relieve some of the pressure. And a couple other notable names in tech. Google rallying 18 handles yesterday. Can the strength here continue? Yeah, this stock broke above, what, 676 a few weeks ago. That cleared it up. You know, it's been some action that's not the easiest to deal with, but Google, sometimes that happens. You look at the chart here and you will see this is when we spoke about it. I don't know, what was this, a month ago when it went above 676? And then yesterday at highs, look at Amazon. Amazon actually is probably best in breed. Big move from this 230 level, holding higher. I think a lot of my traders might even be watching. 255, 256 for additional upside momentum. So there are some, you know, some decent names in high beta land that are acting well. As in the banks as well. The banks saw some decent action yesterday. Bank of America jumping almost 4%. Yes, entries and exits matter. We talked about this a lot this year, you know, earlier in August on Bloomberg and then more recently above $10. You look at the chart here of Bank of America, a lot to like. This was a breakout area, nice flag breakout area. Yesterday, we focused on Goldman. Goldman had a nice tight pattern also. Clean breakout next area above 125. And JP Morgan slowly coming along, acting a little bit better, trying to clear some macro resistance. So the banks, when the banks are in the game and they're giving some strength to the market, it, it, it's always very helpful. Seems as though there's a lot to like out there right now. Even the home builders seem to be coming back in vogue. Yeah, they've been quiet. They've been digesting. They've led the market all year. And then finally, yesterday, if you look at the indice of the XHB, which is for the home builders, you will see, you know, still held above all the moving averages. Nice potent move. Here are the highs. Lots of stocks in this indice started to act well. So home builders should be a focus for relative strength as well. Well, of course, we're going to talk about all of this and more in the long version. So stay with us. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side.